Hello, my name is Duncan Stewart and I'm a proprietor of Scotland Overland. Thanks for your interest. I'm here today to explain our Land Rover Defenders, the features and equipment that they have. All of our Defenders are, as you see here, all long wheelbase Defender 110s of the same colour and specification, save for one thing. We have two models, that which we call the 2x2, two two, which is this on the left here. This is equipped with two tents, each of sufficient size to accommodate two adults, four people in total. This is more popular with families with children, particularly teenagers, or indeed two couples traveling together. The one on the right hand side is the more popular model. It's got what is called the family tent, we call the four by one configuration. This is large enough, it's two meters wide and large enough to accommodate up to four adults. Otherwise, the cars are equipped identically and they have everything that you need to go and see the remotest parts of Scotland. So, this is the basic layout for all of our vehicles. Up on the roof, obviously, you have the tent, the awning and recovery boards, should the worst happen and you get stuck in the mud. Inside, we have, first and foremost, the fridge. The fridge freezer is maintenance free. It runs on its own battery and will never use the main car battery. Once it's got food and drink inside it, it will run for one, two days without starting the car to charge the battery. So there's nothing that you need to do. Down here we have chairs, as many chairs as there are people in the group, and also a little portable toilet, which I'll leave to you to figure out how to use. Up here we have sleeping bags, either three or four season sleeping bags, depending on the time of year, obviously as many sleeping bags as there are people in the group. A table, a big one for your dinner, charcoal barbecue here, and behind the barbecue, pillows, as many that, as, as many as there are in the group, and thermal sleeping bag liners, and for if it's especially cold. Here we have 10 litres of drinking water, a crate for carrying your beer and your food, a gas stove, two ring burner, and gas canisters, which will ensure that you've got sufficient gas to see you through the duration of your trip. In box number one, we have anything to do with food preparation or cooking. So all of your pots and pans, your plates, your cutlery is in there. In box number two, we have everything that isn't food related. So there you have your lantern, torch, first aid kit, electronic items, towels, shovel, you name it. This is your basic luggage area. We find soft bags work best for obvious reasons. Hard suitcases don't fit so well in here. But piled up, you'll get four large sports type bags sufficient for four people. So this is driving a Land Rover Defender for those of you who haven't driven one before. The most obvious difference from a normal car is that you've got a, a second lever here which operates your transfer box. Normally driving is just a standard six, six speed manual gearbox. 98% of the time this is in its default position which is back and towards the driver which is high range with the differential lock off. The car is a permanent four-wheel drive, so you don't need to engage the front wheels or anything like that when you go off-road. This does two things. Firstly, it puts the vehicle in low range for driving very slowly. Generally, in Scotland, typically you won't need it. But it can be useful if you try to manoeuvre on, say, rocks or something. To engage it, simply stop the car into neutral Depress the clutch, move the lever forward, pump the clutch, move it forward again. When in the low gears, 
the car will drive itself. It's got an anti-stall mechanism and it will creep along at walking speeds. You don't need to touch the throttle, it will drive up a steep slope. You can concentrate simply on the brake and the clutch to carefully place and manoeuvre the car. The second thing it does is gives you the ability to lock the centre differential. Without going into the technicalities of that, it basically translates to more traction. And if you're driving on sand, mud, grass, we recommend you just switch it on as a matter of course. Again, stop the vehicle into neutral and simply move the lever to the left. That's off, that's on. It's an electronic switch. When locked, a warning light will appear on the dashboard to say that the differential is locked. There's less likelihood of getting stuck. Drive around on a loose surface with it off, with it on. But it's critical to turn it off when you get back onto a hard surface, such as a road. Again, stop the car, switch it off. Normally the warning light will still be on. Go into reverse and simply drive backwards a few metres. The transmission will unwind as it's called, the warning light will go off and you can be on your way. So I'm now going to show you how to open the tent. This is the larger four-person tent but the principles are identical to the smaller two-man tent. So let's do it. These are the supports for the rain cover. They're colour coded, white ones for the ladder side, black ones for the windows and red ones for the far side. And so that's how you open the tent. Closing it is simply the reverse procedure. Take the rain support poles away, take one of the ladders away and use the other one to push the tent closed. Just try and tuck the body of the tent in as much as possible to ease getting the cover back on afterwards. This is the Oztent Fox Swing awning which is standard on all of our vehicles. It opens out quickly and easily uh, to give you shelter from the elements. Um, covers this side of the car and the rear door. With the poles and the ropes that tether it to be found underneath the rear seat. So I'll show you how to open it. So here we have the contents of box one. It's 
wash basin. Pops up and down. Cutlery, including garlic press, can opener, scissors and corkscrew, and vegetable peeler. Tea towel, dish cloth, the pot stand, chopping board, and some food storage tubs. Three knives, chef's knife, bread knife, a paring knife, cheese grater, dish brush, some biodegradable rubbish bags, jet type lighter, some mugs and goblets. salt and pepper and some sugar biodegradable washing liquid wooden spoon barbecue tongs and some general cooking implements scourer matches your kettle Bowls, plates, pop up colander, and finally a set of pots and saucepans, sufficient for four people. So here we have the contents of box two. Towels for as many people as there are in the group. Just pen and brush. Inverter for charging telephones, tablets, laptop computers with an international adapter. ground pegs, paracord, general tying things, a mallet, a Gerber suspension multi-tool, a tent lamp, rechargeable, clothesline, a two-way splitter for the 12 volt cigarette lit lighter type charger in the car, a jack lead for mp3 player, telephone plugging it into the radio, a charger for the lamp, rough guide to Scotland, First aid kit, a spare gas regulator for the stove, a cargo strap, Coleman lantern with an integrated torch. With a rechargeable battery pack and a spare. Folding shovel. A large ground sheet. And finally, a firebox. This is for making a small contained fire without damaging the ground anywhere that you choose. You can burn anything in this. 
wood, fire bricks. Simply pop that off, open out, push down, and set your fire in there. And then you can use these to toast your marshmallows or this to boil the kettle. So this is the charcoal barbecue that we provide with our standard equipment in all of our cars. Just to show you how it works, put it out of its bag, open it up, take the grills off and you put charcoal in both halves, um, some down at the bottom and some lighter cubes. You light it and then you close it again. You put the slider slightly on just to let the smoke come out and that way it will be going in about 10 minutes. Open it obviously to cook on it. But when you finish cooking close it again while it's still hot. That way it will clean itself and burn off all the fat. So you'll have a nice clean barbecue the next time you use it. So this is the wood burning stove that we provide as an optional extra. Just to show you how we set it up. Take it out of its bag. It's got three legs, which is secured by these pins. Simply open them up and put the pins back in. chimney is stored inside and one piece has a valve on it. Just slot them in. And at the end you have a spark catcher to stop sparks setting fire to things. And this is simply a tray to catch any hot ash that might fall out. We also provide an axe and a folding saw for use on dead wood, driftwood that you might find lying on the ground, never live trees. So this is the Zodi hot shower that we provide as an optional extra. It's a gas powered shower, you can do hot water in most temperatures. The idea with this is that you completely remove the box lid, take everything out, including the gas bottle, we provide the gas. You fill the box with water. It can be river water, lake water, there's a small filter on the pump so it doesn't have to be in the cleanest and that will give you enough for about 10 minutes of showering. The idea is that you take the unit and screw the gas canister onto it. You can then stand the whole ensemble on the lid for st 
visibility. That's the pump, which you then put in the water. Turn the pump on. And when the pump is operating, ignite. And there you go. I can't promise the hottest or the most powerful of showers, but it does the job. Just occasionally, the pump will be turning and no water flows through, and that's simply because the pump needs primed. To do that, just disconnect the pump, get it right inside the water to ensure the water is fully inside. Reconnect it, and off you go. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to inquire further, please use the Contact Us page on our website.